Fourier neural operator is a network that solves well governing equations or physics uh, based systems to uh, using only data so we train these networks only using data to actually get the, the answer we want for example if we have the weather now which is the initial condition the weather now and we want to predict the weather in the future we can use Fourier train, uh, neural uh, operator of course you can use other for other applications the Fourier neural operator but the main purpose of developing such operator is actually solving physics systems that we know it has an under, underlining physics phenomena or physics behavior with of course a specific boundary condition for example as i said the weather condition is looks very good uh, example to actually apply such neural operators to solve the weather problem or weather prediction problem so how does it work well it says Fourier neural operator for that we need to use Fourier or it relies on Fourier so what is Fourier uh, transformation is basically a method in which we can break down uh, a wave from its time domain which is this time domain this is the let's say a value whatever it is let's say the the wind speed or the temperature and you have here is the time so every day let's say the time the temperature increase and then decrease increase and it decreased so the actual thing you will see that you have this big cycle and this is smaller cycles happening so the Fourier transformation provides us these frequencies in which these uh, the the main our complex wave will uh, be um, will be dissected into smaller waves that we can use this for you so this is the time domain and the frequency domain is basically the number of or what kind of frequencies we are getting these um, uh, you know the, the 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 wave itself so so here we can see that this big frequency will be consisted of two frequencies which is or two waves uh, a high wave or a low frequency wave low frequency wave means it's a little bit longer wave and here you will see a little bit uh, well uh, higher frequency wave uh, and in which we can see that if we combine this wave and this wave we will get this wave so this is the purpose of the idea or of the Fourier transformation now I'm not gonna of course of course explain the math of Fourier transformation it's it's already there is a lot of information about it and it's it's very much used for <laughs> anywhere from image processing to signal processing and uh, denoising of course so uh, here you can see that for example this uh, wave will have Fourier transformation or in which we will have these two waves this small wave will uh, small frequency will have it here and the higher frequency you can see it in here so this is the time domain and this is the frequency domain of this problem and of course you have two spikes means you have well, basically two waves so this is um, the Fourier transformation the inverse Fourier transformation is basically uh, using these frequencies to actually creating another wave so using well it's basically transforming the frequency domain to time domain so this is what does it do if you have this um, this uh, like graph you can change it to this graph so in in actual uh, work what we can say like if you have for example you want to denoise a specific signal you will have this uh, let's say the uh, green the, the blue signal is uh, actually uh, noise uh, signal or noisy signal you can see it has lots of waves here lots of waves with different amplitude uh, and uh, different frequencies and different amplitude and you will have these high amplitude uh, locations happening in here and here at this different at this uh, waves so actually you can denoise this by removing these small amplitude um, well um, 
frequencies and then you can get a clean uh, wave so how does it relate it to solving exactly like basically physics example it relates by in in physics or in something that um, that have a specific rule like give the governing equation a physics equation that rules it you will have the big waves will be it corresponds to the the big changes so for example if you have a flow that go from left to right and um, you will have the 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 general thing is you will have an increase let's say from high pressure to a low pressure uh, zone you will find that the pressure will go from high pressure to a low pressure in a specific uh, graph however you might have fluctuation in between so you will have this high pressure and then low pressure we already know the pressure will go down so this is the general the high let's say the low frequency thing that or the high amplitude thing like the general rule is going to this direction however the the higher frequency or the changes in the pressure this is we don't need it this is the kind of the noise in in this uh, idea in this um, methodology so the use of Fourier is basically trying to see the the lower frequency means maybe it is we consider it as the general trend of the flow or the general trend of the physics system so Fourier neural operator is using this and I will explain every part of it so let's say we have the an input and you will have uh, some function p that is going to change the picture to a higher um, channels and then you will have these Fourier uh, layer after that you will have something we will call decoder uh, de will decode something from latent space which is basically some representation of the input image in, in or the input initial condition in our case into some some machine representation or usual deep learning representation related to in, in our case and then the u is the output that we want and in between we will have these Fourier uh, layers that I will of course explain all of them just wait a minute I'm just explaining the whole thing and then we will go step by step so in the beginning you will have an input and then you will have Fourier uh, applied in which will break down the general or the low frequency to and the higher frequency um, well waves so we will know what kind of shapes of course what can be applied in 1d can be applied on 2d so an image and of course 3d so basically we let's consider it 1d we will have a, the the whole basically the low um, frequency that will show us the general well trend and then you will have these uh, this like very kind of noisy input we will uh, dissect it to a smaller inputs and then we will uh, pass it to uh, uh, our matrix which is a linear transformation and the filter um, uh, model in which it will cut down the high frequency some high frequency domain to a specific we we set the number and then we will also do a linear transformation so the input here is not going to be the same as the output so if you have this for example this shape it will be a different shape in here so we will apply some linear transformation linear transformation basically we will multiply it by a number and we sum a bias basically it's just very simple math thing and after that what we will do is we will do inverse Fourier transform which is we will assemble again another assemble all the signal or in, in our case in here signal or whatever like is 2d uh, picture assemble it back now once we assemble it back we will take the input the input signal here or the input image or channel we will pass it to another linear transformation and we will sum these two together or in usually we call it concatenation just add them together now after that we will pass them into a activation function and then we will keep passing them to another 
um, well layer uh, of a Fourier transformation and then as I said we will do decoder okay this might be a lot of information let's go a little bit step by step so basically the whole thing will take an input and will take an output this is going to be our data what is the initial condition what is the result at time let's say at one after one day so basically the weather after one day and and then after you know like let's say after a specific time whatever you want to keep uh, building this data so this is the training data this is going to be our training data and basically the input of the whole network is going to be only one picture and the output will be another picture or one initial condition and the final condition now once the initial condition or the the first picture entered we will see that of course this is a zebra or something but basically the initial condition the picture well it is the input what we need is we need to represent it in many different channels because we want to learn in different ways we want the network to learn in different ways so we will take this image and we will make lots of channel, channels of it um, depends on what what we want or, or you know like we said this uh, parameters so we will have this uh, for example if we have a zebra we will represent it in many different ways and this is going to be ch the channel uh, one thing uh, you can see it for example if you have um, rgb image like colored image you can dissect it to black and white you can dissect it to uh, green blue and um, uh, red so basically this is the the image can be represented by different channels or different ways so this is what we mean by channels so you will you want to we want to learn many different ways so this is the channels this is p what it's going to do now after that we will pass it to the Fourier uh, well layer and the Fourier layer will have the input here and then we said we will go to the Fourier dissect this image into a higher frequency and lower frequency the whole frequency domain and then pass it to basically this r which is activation function the whole this uh, Fourier uh, transformation this layer is going to basically do will take these uh, frequency uh, or first we do we do the free with the Fourier we uh, dissect it into frequency and then r is going to drop down the lower frequency or the higher frequency sorry and then we keep the higher uh, the lower frequency domains and then apply minus uh, or uh, basically um, inverse Fourier and the whole thing will be basically a Fourier transformation and uh, after that uh, we'll take we'll remove this so it will take this let's say this uh, Fourier transformation very uh, kind of complex and then we'll dissect it to a lower frequency and the higher frequency waves we will drop down the higher frequency wave and we will get only the lower frequency wave however we will alter it by applying some linear transformation so this is this is yellow part is going to be what's basically this now on the other hand here we have the w is going to will take this image or the condition whatever it is and we will apply a linear transformation why did we do that very simple we need to preserve some small details so for that if these details are important it will learn it will get learned by this w thing which is um, simply linear transformation and again linear transformation is exactly what we do every layer of this network now after that we will can't contact uh, concatenate these two we'll basically kind of adding them together but yeah it's basically adding them together unless we want to change the weights how we want to add it's up to us but basically adding them together and then we will pass them to activation function or what we usually call it non-linear activation function non-linear is simply follows some specific rule whatever it is so we have leaky rulu we have sigmoid function tan h uh, relu uh, max out uh, elu whatever the function we need we will pass it here 
and it depends on our problem so this is or also the activation function after that we will keep doing this again and again for year trans for year layer one layer after the other after the other what is after that we will do what we will get in here is lots of latent space something we don't understand as a human what we what we can see is it's just some many pictures and let's say if we, if we have two these things let's say yeah, so we will have many pictures that got highlighted in specific ways by passing through this network uh, for example if you have an input uh, it's the same as uh, let's say encoder and decoder network you will have in input or image and output another image from the other side in between we will have the latent space and this latent space is what we mean what we will get at, by the end of Fourier uh, transformation so what do we need when what to do with this latent space well pass it into a decoder and decoder is simply going to take this latent space and transform it into our result that's it that's that's the that's what that does it do like it's just simply this part of the encoder decoder network even uh, some forms of the uh, Fourier transformation actually we can add here uh, an encoder which it's okay because if 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 the network doesn't want anything to learn we can just you know just um just um, you know like all the weights will be like one basically no transformation it will based on the training process so it is possible to to actually apply it in here and basically we will get the end of it is going to be our result so that's how the Fourier transformation works by simply applying Fourier transformation and once you apply Fourier transformation you will get the big image and also will preserve this small image this is the idea of it so hopefully you understood how Fourier transformation works.